Mr. Transformers 96 here with another video where I'm going to be reviewing uh, the second season of The Mandalorian. Um, so I never did a season one review, uh, so I think I'll start off just by kind of going over my opinions with season one, talk about how I felt with season two kind of in general, um, and then break down the episodes a bit and actually I'll rank them from my um, least favorite to favorite. So let's get started. Season one, I really did love. I thought it was a really enjoyable show that was cinematic um, in its quality, which is very exciting. I will say that I probably didn't like season one as much as a lot of people. You know, people were really freaking out about it. And I liked it. You know, I certainly thought it was good. I was excited for season two because of it. But I, I wasn't as in love with it as some people. Um, I think that some of my issues with season one were the uh, the armor. I, I really didn't like that as a character. I thought that her scenes were just very exposition heavy and the, the way that she was performed was cheesy in my opinion. Um, I thought that some of the episodes, although kind of a fun story on their own, really didn't help at all as far as the overarching uh, you know, narrative. Um, and that's, that's what I was most interested interested in, so seeing the kind of side adventures just constantly was a little uh, dragging. Um, some were better than others, too, you know? Uh, so those were kind of my issues with the show. Of course, I, I liked the characters. Oh, also, uh, Mando at the beginning, um, and for a good majority of that show, really doesn't show a lot of personality, and that that's for two reasons. That's for one reason, that he always wears a helmet, so um, if your personality is subtle, and you've got a helmet on, it's just impossible to actually see. Uh, and that's just how his character is supposed to be. He's very, you know, supposed to be very uh, firm, of course, at the beginning. And the child is supposed to soften him up a bit by the end. Um, but I thought that it does hurt your connection with him, um, at least for a good part of the beginning of the show, really, uh, the episode directed by Ron Howard's daughter was the first one where I thought we got any emotion from him, um, which was one of my favorite episodes of the season. Oh, also, this is going to have spoilers, of course, for season one and two, so be prepared for that. Um, but yeah, overall, I enjoyed the show. It was not... I wasn't as into it as a lot of people were, though, you know? People were really freaking out about it, and I, I enjoyed it. There was aspects that I really did freak out about, um, but it wasn't, like, the most amazing thing to me. Um, but I liked it a lot. Uh, so that's kind of my my feelings of Season 1 and how I walked into Season 2. I was very excited for Season 2, of course. Um, season 2, though, is kind of the perfect season for this type of show for me personally. Uh, season 2 fixed any and all issues I had with Season 1. All of those issues that I just described were basically fixed. Um, the armor is completely taken out, doesn't make one appearance. Uh, um, the uh, Mando, because he's been softened up by the child, he has a lot more personality this season, which really does shine. Um, and then it doesn't... it has... Uh, it has one episode that I would consider as just kind of a, a mission episode that doesn't really have... You know, I, I guess there's two episodes like that in the season. There's a lot less... Um, so it doesn't bother me as much because with the with the first season, for me personally, it feels like the first episode and the second to last and the last episode are the only ones that deal with the main story arc. And then the other, uh, you know, five in the middle are just individual stories, um, you know, just individual missions that do not connect in the slightest to the actual overall episode. And that's really not the case here. Um, there's maybe two episodes of the season that are very contained, while the other ones really do have a strong uh, connection to the main uh, story arc, which I really like a lot. Um, so let's talk about the uh, the, the episodes themselves, and then I'll give an overview, and then I'll rank them, and then I'll give an overview at the end of what I thought of the season as as a whole in, in a little bit more detail. Um, so, of the season, we have Chapter 9 that starts it off, the Tusken Raider episode, uh, where they're fighting the, uh, the, the dragon in the dunes, and you see Boba Fett's armor, you meet a new character called the Sheriff. I really love this episode. I thought it was very cool. Um, I thought that it, it brought... Uh, kind of a, a larger story arc that would be played out later in the season to play, being Boba Fett's armor. I um, was very excited to see Boba Fett's armor and basically get confirmation that, of course, Boba Fett would be in the show, um, even when you just see his armor. But then the tease at the end of actually seeing Boba Fett, um, even armorless, was very exciting. I thought that the the actual story of trying to subdue and, and kill that dragon um, was really cool. I loved... It, it was a very cinematic episode, too. Um, I 
I absolutely love the shot where the Tusken Raiders are running away from the, uh, the, the, the pits as the dragon, you know, slowly comes out from uh, below as it's chasing them. And as it's doing that, the two aspect ratio bars on the top and bottom of your screen actually go away. And, like, it isn't just that they cut to another scene where they're gone. They actually remove them in front of you, which is very subtle. Um, the people that I watched it with did not notice. Uh, but it's just really cool because it, it, like, brings it up almost like you're watching an IMAX scene because then that entire battle with the dragon does not have those aspect ratio bars. So it's just a larger screen, which just made it feel like really epic. I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought that the new character of the sheriff was a really cool character as well. Um, I, you know, uh, one disappointment is that we didn't see him again. I figured that it would kind of be like season one, where you introduce him in an episode and maybe come back for the last one, you know, kind of like IG-11. Um, but that never happened, which is a shame. I wouldn't mind seeing him again uh, sometime in the future. Great episode, though. I really enjoyed it. Uh, number two, the Spider episode, chapter 10. Um, I actually, I really enjoyed this episode. It is, this this one is very much just a contained story. It doesn't really have anything to do with the overarching uh, storyline. But I thought it was a really fun episode. The kind of stranded on an uh, icy planet and then being attacked so viciously by those spider creatures. I thought it was a really intense episode. And uh, I just, I really enjoyed enjoyed it overall. Um, of course, you know, disappointed that it's kind of just its own thing. It didn't really have anything to do with anything else. Um, but it was really enjoyable, in my opinion. I actually really liked it. Um, chapter 11, uh, bo kind of ship raid. Um, this was a great episode, obviously bringing back another massive character from uh, both Clone Wars and Rebels, which was exciting. Uh, and to, to see her in live action for the first time was very cool. I thought she was well cast, not only for her looks, like, because she does look like the character, um, but also I think that she's a good actress. Um, Cara Dune, she, you know, she was kind of... Uh, your your female um, protagonist in the first uh, season, and I think that she is a nice. She's an okay character. Here's the thing: I like her as as a person. I've seen her in behind the scenes stuff about making the Mandalorian. She seems like a really nice person. Physically, she handles the fighting really well. Um, but I think that she is by far the weakest actress or actor, or just in general, in the entire um, series. So I. I I, I think it would be worth spending some money just to send her um, to get some acting lessons, to be honest. Her character is, you know, very stern. She doesn't need a ton of acting, but I think she needs a little bit more than um, than the actress is capable of currently. But, you know, she didn't start out as an actress, so it makes sense. But she's a likable person. She's fine in the show, but it does... Whenever she has to deliver, like, an actual line, it... And it sometimes come across a little cringeworthy to me personally. Um, but and nonetheless, you know, Bo-Katan, they didn't just pick, like, somebody who could fight well. They actually picked a good actress, too, which was nice. Um, but that episode was really cool. Seeing more Mandalorians was awesome, and ones that we actually know previously. And then the ship raid was just a very exciting scene um, and did, you know, speak the, another character that we would... Uh, come to see quite soon being Ahsoka. Um, then next up we have Chapter 12, the Grief Karga uh, kind of helping him um, infiltrate the, the, the structure, you know, the, the this was an episode that I didn't like um, because you, you go from a very exciting, ep very impactful episode like the last one that then, you know, announces Ahsoka and you're hoping you're going to see Ahsoka in this episode and not only it, you do not see Ahsoka, but it's just an episode that doesn't help the storyline really at all. It's kind of a put the kid in school, you know, get him to the side, help your previous friends on a, a little mission that was not... a tremendously exciting mission either. Um, this was definitely an episode that I, I did not find necessary, um, nor was it just interesting on its own merits. Like the Spider episode, not necessary, but very interesting on its own merits in my opinion. And then we move over to Ahsoka, finally. We get Chapter 13. This is, uh, we get her introduction, which was incredibly exciting. Um, I really like seeing Ahsoka in live action. You know, it's kind of a, a dream come true. And her, her introduction and her uh, just... Uh, character throughout that story was incredibly exciting. Um, just wanted to see more of her. Disappointed that she didn't come back, but with the announcement of her own show, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, so, overall, really enjoyed that episode. I thought it was a fun episode on its own, but it also very much moved the, f the story forward as far as Grogu, uh, finding his name, finding a bit about his past, um, kind of just learning more about him, and learning what the next steps are with him, which is very important for just the overarching storyline. But overall, Overall, great episode. Really cool to see some lightsaber action within The Mandalorian 2 as well. 
Chapter 14, um, Boba Fett's return, as well as the capture of Grogu. Uh, this was a very exciting episode. Um, and, and this episode got to the point, you know, which I really... It was it was nice. There was not a whole lot of... Uh, of, of kind of walking around beforehand, basically. So, you know, we, we found the temple. I figured that the journey to the temple would be something that would take quite a long time, where he'd meet some people on the way that would help him get there. It was very much just like they found it as soon as they got to the planet. Um, but overall, it was a really exciting episode. The trooper action was very intense. We got the introduction of the dark troopers, which was incredibly exciting. And to see Boba don his uh, famous outfit again was really incredible. Um, then second to last, chapter 15, uh, kind of going to free Mayfeld to help them uh, infiltrate an Empire facility to get the whereabouts or the location of Moff Gideon. Um, this was an episode that I thought was okay. On an episode by itself, it's, it's pretty solid, and I don't mind it. Um, I think that it's a decent story. Uh, but it comes right after the the massive, you know, child's taken, we gotta get him back, and then we just have a little side mission again. It's very much like uh, going from the bo episode to the Grief Cargo one, it's it's a step backwards from our previous episode and from what was set up as far as the main story arc. Um, so it, it just kind of slows down the pace of the show. Um, good episode on its own. Again, I really like kind of seeing the Empire perspective, seeing the troopers like kind of supporting each other um, and and seeing their kind of way of... of life and, and not in a uh, just kind of like a, a battlefield type of way was actually really cool. So I enjoyed the episode overall, but it was a step back from the main story arc and the main story arc really picked up just beforehand. So that was majorly disappointing. Um, the uh, the Boba Fett bomb scene, though, I have watched more than any other scene of any Mandalorian episode. It, it, that was something that uh, that was really quite special. But I don't know if I need the entire episode to be a step back just to get that one amazing shot. Um, but yeah, that was very nice in it, of course. And then the finale, uh, th this was absolutely incredible. The, the finale is spectacular. Um, not only is it completely about the main storyline, of course, um, but it brings... Everything that you could have wanted, Bo-Katan returns, uh, the Dark Troopers get their full introduction, um, you know, they're, they're shown in uh, in the Grogu episode, basically, where they, uh, they take him, but you don't get to see their full might and their full kind of look until this episode. Um, the surprise reveal of who Grogu was communicating with and who comes to uh, to take him as a bad one, basically, is incredibly exciting, and it was just very well cut together. Um, this episode is exciting in every way. I think that the Dark Troopers, you know, in the episode itself, the Dark Troopers do not do much. They do not. But they are shot so well and in such a fierce and exciting way. They're cut to a lot and they're also talked up quite a bit um, within the episode itself that they make them seem like just such a force, which is very exciting. Of course, they get cut down, you know, rather easily when it comes to the Jedi uh, who saves Grogu, um, who's Luke, of course, which is exciting. You know, there was a few kind of possibilities of what Jedi would hear Grogu's call. And uh, Luke, of course, was one that was rumored. Luke was the one that I wanted the most, but I did not think was the most likely. Um, so to see him was very exciting. Also... People rumored, you know, that if it was going to be Luke, that maybe it would be Sebastian Stan playing him. Because if you haven't seen, Sebastian Stan actually looks a ton like Luke. Um, when you when you cut the the right haircut on him, he actually looks a lot like a younger Mark Hamill. Um, but to see that they didn't go with that and they just de-aged Mark Hamill was very exciting. They did him quite well too. Um, I, I thought that the de-aging looked really good. Um, the voice was, in, you know, perfect as well. Uh, overall, just an incredibly exciting episode that had such a finality to it that I wasn't expecting. They wrapped up the main storyline of The Mandalorian, which is the connection between Mando and Grogu, um, and they completed Mando's mission of getting Grogu to the person that would help him, um, which was so shocking. I didn't expect that at all. Um, I, I expected, I, I thought there was a good chance that we'd see who Grogu was communicating with, um, but I thought it would be more of a tease and not like, a, oh, we found him, here's Grogu. Um, so I'm, I'm surprised. Like, it almost, if the Mandalorian just series ended here, it would be very satisfying because they wrapped up the main storyline so well. There are still storylines that they can continue with, of course, um, but the main one that the entire series has been about since the very end of the last episode, or excuse me, the very end of the first episode, um, is completely 
completed now, which is just like mind blowing. I didn't expect that at all. But very good. We also get our, our first end credit scene from The Mandalorian uh, setting up Boba Fett series, which I'm very happy that they didn't announce Boba Fett series. I'm glad that they kept it a secret for the end credit scene. I thought that was very cool. And, um, seeing that the Book of Boba Fett's going to kind of be about Boba Fett taking over the Hut Empire is very exciting as well. So overall, I, I really did enjoy the episodes um, in, in total. There was two that, there was one that I, I really didn't like much, and then there was one that was disappointing. The rest, though, I thought were all very good, um, or, you know, various degrees of good. Uh, but just to rank them, my least favorite is Chapter 12, the uh, Helping Grief Cargo. Again, I, I think that it's a step back, and the episode itself isn't super interesting. Uh, Chapter 15 would be my next up. Mayfeld, you know, helping or getting his help to find the whereabouts of Moff Gideon. Um, again, it's a major step back. It's an interesting episode on its own, but it's just such a major step back that it was disappointing. Uh, number six would be Chapter 10, the Spider episode. Um, an episode that I really enjoyed, actually. I, th I think it's a very exciting episode on its own, but it's very much a, a one-off and it's not super needed. Um... Uh, number five would be Chapter 11, the bo ship raid. Really enjoyed this episode. And then from here on out, it's just basically like all levels of great episode. Um, I, I had to, to shift these around a few times because they're all so good that they're, they're a little bit interchangeable. Um, chapter four being Ahsoka's episode. Um, chapter, you know, or excuse me, number four, which is chapter 13, which is Ahsoka's episode. Uh, then number three, we have chapter nine being the Tusken Raider uh, episode. This is the, the first episode of the season. I'm surprised that I actually ranked that higher than the Ahsoka episode. As much as I love seeing Ahsoka, um, which was, that was fantastic and learning more about the child, the episode itself, just as far as the level up of, of episode, I actually like the Tusken Raider one quite a bit. And I think just as an episode itself, was better than the Ahsoka episode, even though seeing Ahsoka was incredible. Um, number two, I have chapter 14 as Boba Fett's Return. Really exciting episode. I really wish that this episode just... Sorry about that, my camera just ran out of juice uh, mid-talk there. Um, so what I was saying, though, is that it would be very cool if this episode would just run right into the finale. Um, and an easy way to do that is that when Slave 1 is, you know, comes across the Empire ship that has uh, Grogu, shoots a little tracking beam... Uh, beacon on it, and then we completely avoid the need for that uh, that episode in between. So, um, I, yeah, that would have been a really easy way because you went from something so intense to something so generic to something so intense. Um, and then number one, it's of course the finale. I, I thought that that couldn't have been done any better. It is so intense and action packed, but it has a lot of heart, and it also has the nostalgia surprise. It's just it's really everything that you could want for um, something Star Wars. Uh, so. Personally, um, really love the the season overall. Uh, you know, I, I find two. There's one episode that I really just kind of didn't care for. There's one episode that I find is a little unnecessary, and then all the other episodes I either loved or really liked, like you know, and everything in between. So great season. It takes everything that I didn't like about season one and completely fixes it, um, but still keeping the things that I liked about season one. Uh, so it just uh, is is the perfect follow up to the first season, in my opinion personally. Um, I think this is far superior than the first season as well. Uh, so overall, I loved it. The end credit scene, you know, uh, gets me excited for some of the spin-offs that this is creating. There's so many Star Wars shows coming out now, and um, knowing that we're going to get an Ahsoka and a Boba Fett show is really cool. Um, I think that there's still going to be a third season of, of Mandalorian. I'm not sure. You know, I, I've kind of addressed it earlier, but... I'm fine if they do one, and I'd also be okay if they don't, because they wrapped up the main storyline in such a nice way that this would be a very satisfying ending if it really is the ending of, uh, of our story with Mando. Um, however, if it continues and, you know, it goes with him and Bo-Katan having issues because he has the Darksaber and she physically needs to defeat him to get it, uh, and taking back Mandalore, you know, if it goes through all that, it could still be very exciting, though. So I'm okay if they continue it, and I'm okay if they end it, to be quite honest. Um, we have plenty of Star Wars content coming, and this was uh, finished so nicely that I'm, I'm ready for the ride if there's more story to tell, but if they think that it's completed, I'm fine with that as well. Um, but there you go, that's my thoughts on Season 2 as a whole, and kind of a, a 
kind of a wrap-up of season one, my opinions of that as well, and a ranking of all the episodes this season. Let me know what you guys think of uh, it. If you want to go episode by episode, I'd love to hear. Or if you just want to say kind of uh, what you thought of it in total, uh, that's fine too. Or if you guys all just want to talk about uh, Luke, that that's perfectly good as well. <laughs> so there you go. That's my thoughts on this season. Let me know what you guys think, and thanks so much for watching.